G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is the Pancor Jackhammer, a combat shotgun that looks like it's super futuristic, but really it was invented during the 50s or somewhere around the Korean War when the guy actually using the combat shotguns in that war decided that the pump action shotguns weren't good enough, so he tried to do better. That's right, I've actually know a little bit about this weapon. I watched uh, the Forgotten Weapons episode on it, and yeah, I've done my homework this time, so I know a little bit more about this. Anyways, this is a highly customizable standalone combat shotgun that is bullpup with a revolver cylinder instead of a mag and also it has custom animations too so this is a very very high quality weapon right here it's only it's really lightweight too this comes in under 30 megabytes that's crazy for what it is that's bloody huge anyways we'll just stop gawking at this for a second we'll actually get into the attachments and first of all for the receivers We'll pop it all the way up to advance for a nice 510 damage. We can get a little bit more out of the Magnum receiver, but that just throws your recoil. Um, it, it makes it ridiculous, as it says, so we won't do that. We're missing out on uh, 27, no, yeah, 27 by the looks um, hit, hit points worth of damage, but we actually get a little bit more range out of the advanced receiver, so we'll definitely do that. Right now, I've got the 00 buckshot, which is your standard issue military buckshot ammo. You can make that number 4 buckshot, and that'll actually give you 27 projectiles instead of the standard 9, which is kind of interesting. You can have rifled slugs, which will, um, yeah, they'll be a little bit more accurate at range than your standard slugs. The breaching slugs will do better damage. The flechés, obviously, that's for punching through armor. You get a little bit more stopping power out of that, at least in real life. There is no such thing as stopping power, unless it has some weird synergy with the penetrator perk, but maybe not. It's a shotgun. We don't really expect that much. You can get armor-piercing slugs, which are nice. Armor-piercing fin stabilized discarding sabers. Yeah, hell yeah, that's a cool ammo name. I actually recognize that from tank ammunition, but yes, that sounds like it'll be firing one single dart into them, which would actually sound kind of cool. You've got Dragon's Breath here, which will add a ton of fire and a little bit of energy damage on top of that, which is nice. And the Fragmentation Slugs, if you remember this thing in Battlefield 3, that's when I first experienced this thing. Yes, um, it'll kind of be like the 12 gauge frags there. And uh, we won't probably do anything with this. We'll definitely try out these ammo types with a different one. But for now, we'll keep it on that double O buckshot. You can change the drum to a more um, lighter material, and that'll give you a better reload speed. Standard reload speed on this is about six seconds, so you want to upgrade that as much as possible. We've got the fast hands perk, so we won't be suffering too much from the reloads. And there is no point on putting scopes on this, because to my knowledge, you can't make this semi-auto, which means it has no synergy with the sniper perk, unfortunately. Reflex sight will do well, though. It'll help us out in bats if we decide to use it, and also give us a clearer picture, because the iron sights are very basic here. It's only like the V and that single notch day. We'll see that later, but we'll go for the reflex site now, which is actually from the 44 Magnum. You can actually see the tactical rails left over too, which is kind of interesting. And of course, a legendary effect is available on this thing. Now, if you put explosive on this with the number four buckshot, you'll be getting 27 um, pellets of that explosive damage, which would be absolutely devastating and unrealistic too. If I wanted to make this thing explosive, I'd actually put in the frag rounds into it because they sound really cool. But anyways, that is our Pancor Jackhammer. We'll take this into Gunners Plaza, as well as many others, because this thing is going to be awesome. Alright, let's get into it. But before we get into shooting people for real, I'm just going to let you know that you can actually craft this thing at a chemistry workstation, as well as the mine that it comes with. And there's actual um, use for this mine. It was like a landmine using the um, magazine or the drum of this, or the revolver thing, but yeah. Um, that's actually a mine that we can create at this, although it's going to take quite a lot of materials and a little bit of the perk investments to actually make that, but then again, they're very easy to grab. You can just make them at a chemistry station out of nothing. That's good stuff. Okay, let's shoot people for real this time. Righto, so here we are outside of Immersive Gunners Plaza with our jackhammer in hand, and before we get into it, that's the reload animation as we move up. Now, since we're not using a suppressed weapon here, we're likely not going to get away with our general tactics of just sneak attack critting every single one of these gunners. So, to that end, we're just going to use some of our mines and cover our sort of backs as we go over here. And what we want to do is head in this sort of a direction first. Hopefully, we can draw some out in the caution like this, and then we can get some cheeky... Mine kills. I think I got one just then, um, judging by that XP, so that's good. There we go. So it looks like they have to physically actually stand on these shotgun mines for them to actually go off. It's not um, proximity detonated like the mines in the vanilla game, so that kind of sucks. 
but it's a little bit more realistic that way, so that's fine. And we'll break out of our... There we go, there's the sound. We'll break out of our sneaky just by shooting these few gunners first. We'll get a nice takedown on you. This does have a custom bash animation, which I want to get to, but we'll go ahead and bash this one. As you can tell, you just poke them with that muzzle break there, which is kind of cool, I guess. There's no bayonet on this, but you just poke them with the blunt muzzle break anyway, but that's fine. Okay, so that was a buckshot there. We get nine pallets per shot. We're doing okay with that, but we can do better. Since these gunners are heavily armored, they're going to suffer a little bit when we're using the flechette rounds, which are designed to punch through that armor, so that's good. Um, we're getting less damage per pallet, but that is only because um, floating damage divides all of the damage um, to all of the pallets that actually land on. So, as you can tell, we're getting 16 damage per pallet, but we're, remember, we're firing an extra 11 when we fire this thing, so it's actually better damage out of this thing, which is good. Getting that armor-piercing potential is also a good thing. We'll just quickly bash you. Okay, we're in a little bit of trouble with our health at the moment. We're not going too well, and all of these gunners are definitely hot on my tail, so I'm going to have to use this thing with slugs and see if we can quickly finish off these gunners there. Okay, so as you can tell, the slugs do an okay amount of damage, but nothing too sort of great. Haha, <laughs> I can actually drop them right in front of them and there's no splash damage to actually kill me, so that's kind of a nice tactic. You don't usually see that with mines. Okay, we'll switch over to our next one. This one is going to be Dragon's Breath. As you can tell, it has the incendiary sort of um, projectiles when it fires. Since we are in Nerd Rage, we did a hell of a lot more damage than we usually get, but that's fine. What we want to do now is quickly drop some more mines along here, and since this is a nice little choke point, we can actually probably draw a few more gunners over here. There's a laser sight that's um, confusing me. I think I just got another one with mine. Oh, they actually um, set off my mine. Oh, stop shooting me up there. We'll go for a crit on you. Now, since this thing is automatic, you're going to get that burst fire in vats, and if you um, execute a crit with that, it's pretty devastating, as you can see. Now, there's a laser sight still going through the wall there. And now we're back into Nerd Rage, which means we might have to kill these gunners just so we can save our lives here. There we go. So not getting that sweet health regeneration that I would like at this point, but we did manage to kill those couple of gunners nice and quickly there. Still not sure where this person pointing the laser sight is. Who is that? That's just a Feral Ghoul Roma. Gunner Commander, you gotta go down. We'll just crit you from up here. Very good. All right, we'll pull out something a little bit more scary. This is the 12 gauge frags. As you can tell, it's like firing mini rockets out of them. It's awesome, but we've, I think we've still got the damage perks still activated there, so that's all right. And uh, you know what? We'll just quickly pick up our shotgun mine, get that back. We don't really need it right now. And looking through the iron sights, yes, they are very basic. We'll see this better in the light later on. Oh yes, that splash damage is definitely what we need to take out these gunners quickly. Okay, so what have we got left? Just just got a few up the top, and most of them have been dealt with thus far, which is good. I'd imagine we're coming close to a level up at this point too, which is great. Now, it looks like um, direct hits are the way to go with the frag, so it's not like all relying on dam uh, I mean, splash damage. That leaves it a little bit more skillful to use than your basic sort of... Um, oh man, we're that close to death at this point. A little bit more skillful than the standard scattershot legendary shotguns, which are kind of cheap to use, but I'll find at the same time in that way. Alright, so we're close to a level up at this point. We're going to use that to quickly save our lives um, as soon as we get that next gun up. Come on. Okay, there's a Feral Ghoul Roma over there. I'm going to try to snipe them with this. As you can tell, it's not a hit scan weapon either, which adds a little bit more depth to its use too. So whilst the projectiles are powerful, we still have to be sort of accurate with it to actually make the best use of it. Why is there still a laser sight on me? I think there is a gunner actually stuck inside this particular... No, it's actually one over there. That's, that's how AIs work. They just point their gun at you through walls. They know exactly where you are at all times, which is kind of interesting. You've got yourself one of those Beretta guns, don't you? Yes, you do. Okay, looks like we're mostly clear at this point. We've... Uh, pissed off a few creatures in this direction. And I'm stuck in this wall. That's great. Come on, Winter. Get through there. Come on. You've been through worse things before. I did a whole playthrough where you got one shot at all the time. You can handle this. Alright, it's a glowing blood, blood bug. I'm just going to crit him because I'm lazy. And that's something coming up on my radar too. You can die. Ah, yes. Good old one-shotting people. 
as you can tell, the sprint animations and the animations in general aren't War Daddy tier animations, so, you know, um, it's a little bit disappointing, but they work fine for what they are, and they're new animations nonetheless, so that's perfectly acceptable for me, and I'm not really much of an animation snob anyway, but yeah. New animations equals good animations yes. in my book, to be honest. Unless they don't line up and uh, use for a different weapon and port it on there um, without really um, changing it up a little bit. Then I'm going, ah, huh, that's not good. But there you go. That was the Pancor Jackhammer in Immersive Gunners Plaza. We got our ass kicked there for a second, but then we pulled out the explosive one and things went great. Anyways, we'll go ahead and head into Gunners Plaza for realsies, and then we can calm down and maybe experiment with a, a little bit more of the ammo types. Oh yeah, here's what this thing looks like in third person in the daylight. Sorry, I forgot to show this off in the next clip. But yeah, that's what it looks like. A nicely scaled weapon indeed. Look, that's what it looks like with the reflex sight, with the wacky scope, and with another scope there. You can actually see the projectile coming out of the barrel. That's cool. Alright. Oh, I saw that combat rifle animation. In particular, I actually want to look at this one. I've got a scope on it because it looks kind of tacky, but it's going to be fine, don't worry. And um, this one is actually able to stun enemies, so I guess this is kind of the closest we can get to the pulse slug. Yep, looks like we can get these things paralyzed. Maybe I should have used this before. And then once they're paralyzed, all we need to do, point blank, into the head, and they're done for. And they're done for. Okay. I'd imagine this doesn't work on machines though, so we'll just quickly shoot this turret over there. Well, it's, it's enough to outright kill the turret, so that's okay. Maybe it does do a little bit better damage against robots, simply because it's electricity-based. Man, I love my pulse slugs. They're so cool. Haha, <laughs> cop that, mate. Righto, we'll move up. Now, this thing doesn't have the most impressive sounds either. In fact, they're a little bit quiet. Compared to the AA-12, they're super quiet. You can barely hear them. I'm just going to be quiet for a second, just so you can hear them. Not too impressive, but they do the job well, just kind of like the animations itself. But nonetheless, it is a great we weapon. Was still. I'm actually blown away that this thing is only 30 megabytes. So usually you've got the big, um, you know, the big names making their mods in Fallout 4. They usually like 200 to 300 megabytes, but this thing's only 30. That's nothing. If this comes out for Xbox One, which I really hope it does, because I'd I kind of like everyone to experience this mod for themselves, um, I'd imagine that having only... Oh, bugger off turret. Okay, I'm going to have to crit you through a wall, I think. Can I get the turret back? Come on. Bat, stop doing this. Alright, make sure we can actually hit them. And we go for a crit. There we go. Okay, that looks like everyone paralyzed. We'll bring out our good old shotgun here. Looks like the paralyzation thing is a little bit game-breaking, but that's fine. I kind of like stunning people, but it doesn't last forever too, so you can't just do what I did, paralyze everyone with enough time to actually kill them. Although I did have to mess around with that turret a little bit, so that's fine. Flechettes now, because they're a little bit more effective. Ah, yes, Captain Bridget. Nice to see you. All right. I bet she's jealous, or that one, the, that's a synth one, but the real Captain Bridget is jealous that she didn't get to use the jackhammer herself. This is Winter's gun now, give me that. Nobody else can take that from me. Righto, we'll move over to slugs once more, because I want to give this one a little bit more of a run for its money, even though using the scatter shot shells here was probably a little bit better, but, ooh, 505 damage, that seems alright. Ah! Okay, we got there eventually, but there might be a little bit of in either inherent inaccuracy in this slug, or maybe the hitbox for the round is a little bit too big, like the plasma guns or the solar cannon. So that's a little bit of a shame. It's not really a sniper weapon anyway. I think there is a little bit of spread to it, so we can't actually use it as a sniper weapon, but it is a nice idea, or a nice little alternative way to get a little bit more range out of this, I suppose. But again, if you really want to get a little bit more range and a little bit more power, there's always the 12 gauge frags. And they'll never let you down, I'll tell you that much. Righto. 
one Tara left to 14, uh, 1400 damage on you with a sneak attack with our 12 gauge frags and that is what it is like using this thing in Gunners Plaza. I am loving this weapon. This is one of the most this is the one of the best shotguns I've ever used and I've used the AA-12 before. That thing's awesome but this thing I, I kind of like it better for some reason. Maybe it's because it's a jackhammer and jackhammers are awesome. Righto, monster time. Righto, looks like Swan has cooked himself a party of Rust Devils. Now I've got a question. Can we paralyze Swan with this particular round? Doesn't look like we can. Swan, uh, actually, I think Swan has some sort of um, actual immunity against it. But look at this. You can actually see the projectiles when we're shooting them through a scope. And it does look like that my accuracy... Um, a theory on this thing proves true because as you can tell these things are going all over the place if I fire this thing more rapidly I'm going to miss shots very very quickly so that's good we'll move over to our iron sights and the one with the 12 gauge frags again because this will probably do the best damage for us okay looks like our fire rate is a little bit limited in third person which is kind of strange but anyways we'll go for some shots there I saw that combat rifle animation reload animation in third person. Ooh, a little bit of misfiring happening. I'm not sure what's happening there. Go for another crit while we have it, and then we're going to run like hell with our remaining action points, get staggered by a rock, and then get squished by his ha anchor. But that's okay. I think there's still some sort of rust devils out there. Maybe he'll go and attack them instead, whilst I get this puppy reloaded. Now the rate of fire on this thing is something that's actually really good about it too because if you compare the rate of fire to this on a standard combat shotgun it does so much more in terms of its yeah damage output just because it can fire so much faster let alone it's better base damage. Yeah but not having the magazine obviously slows down its reload a bit so I guess not entirely well balanced. This thing is obviously going to kick everything's ass. Also, that's the lone rust devil. Your troubles aren't over yet, pal. There you go. But I think I'm going to leave it there. That was the Pancor Jackhammer, and I have had a blast with this. And you know what? This mod is here to say on my computer. I'm not going to remove this mod. I want to use this during a stream one time because I, this is awesome. Tactical, you are the man. Keep waking weapon mods like this and I'll consider you a god tier modder. Maybe I should already. But anyways, if you'd like to see this thing in your game, check out the description. Link shall be down there below. If this thing is not ported onto Xbox within the next few days, I'm going to be very surprised because it's a lightweight mod and it should work all that fine. Um, it is recently released too so maybe the xbox port is coming a little bit later so i'll keep my eye out i'll keep my eye out sorry i'm getting a little bit um stuttery here but yes i'll keep my eye out on that and then i'll let you guys know probably in a further video if you're still interested links will be in the description if it's there also this companion mod you can play you can have this character in your game she'll follow you around and shoot stuff for you that's winter she can be in your game too she's on ps4 all platforms go download her if you want thank you for watching guys